Bellator 266 main event. Scheduled for three rounds between Yoel Romero and Phil Davis. Romero making his long-anticipated Bellator debut. The 44-year-old, a two-time former UFC title challenger. Fighting at 205 for the first time since 2011. His opponent, whole list of credentials as well. Former NCAA Division I national champion. In 28 pro fights, Davis never been knocked out or submitted. Here in the first round, avoids the head kick of Romero. Cracks him with the right hand. Getting coached up between rounds. Mostly a feeling out process there in the first. In round two, the action picked up a bit. Davis lands a stiff right, follows with a kick to the body, then another right hand. It's a combo juicy sweet. Later in the round, Davis working the takedown, gets the Olympic silver medalist to the ground. Round two was the turning point here. Davis started to take over. Brian Campbell scored round two, 10-9 Davis. In round three, Davis going back to the takedown, starts getting them at will. There you see him working against the fence. The 44-year-old Romero just didn't have enough gas to defend that takedown offense. Despite those wrestling credentials, a dominant performance for Phil Davis. But despite that, one judge did give the fight to Romero. There you see Romero even saying, this man won. Phil Davis wins via split decision. You had Davis on the money line, that's minus 165. Davis by decision pays you a dollar 42 your dollar. Uh, going a little deeper here on the win for Davis. He improves to 10 and three in his Bellator career. Has not lost by KO or submission in his two losses most notably coming to former champion. So Davis's resume continues to build as he looks forward to what's next. For more on this one, let's welcome in CBS Sports Combat Analyst, host of Morning Combat, Brian Campbell, the king of swing with us now. Uh, BC, let's start with your Romero, the loser in this bout, the 44-year-old, now on a four-fight losing streak with his last win coming in 2018. What'd you make of Romero's performance here? Despite the loss, did he show you anything to make you think maybe there's another run in him, maybe not at a title, but at least to remain a part of the conversation here in Bellator? I mean, he could be an attraction because that threat of power was very real. You heard Phil Davis talk about it after the fight. You saw the threat with some wild missed strikes from Romero, and certainly he still employs a very uh, sound defensive strategy. The problem is the lack of offense. And in this case, it was almost laughable after the fight to see Romero complaining to his team, saying he thought this main event was five rounds, not three, which in theory might have explained why you didn't see him going for broke in that final round. I'm not even sure it would have mattered, though, because Phil Davis rose to the occasion in this fight when he needed to and absolutely dominated that final round. I scored it 10 to 8 for Davis, as did one of the three judges. Four consecutive takedowns and some solid ground and pound on top. Romero is 44, and you can't use that number against him because uh, he's a rock. He's a mm -hmm. freak of nature legitimately. Uh, he can still make fun fights against the right style. But I think what we saw in, tw in 2020, the final fight in the UFC run for Yoel Romero, where he kind of left uh, everything sitting at the altar against Israel Adesanya, had a chance at that middleweight title, but was too willing to play slow chess. He took that chance once again against Phil Davis, and he came up empty. Yeah, got to know uh, how long the fight is, first and foremost. Uh, very important to move forward with that knowledge on your side. But as you said, not sure things would have gotten a whole lot better there in rounds four and round five, hypothetically. Romero landing just 25 total strikes in this bout, BC. Uh, you called it on the preview show. You and Luke did saying Phil Davis, that's probably the ticket to ride here. He improves the 10 and three since signing with Bellator. Only losses have come to former world champions. He's not won four of his last five bouts, but it's no spring chicken either. What's next for Davis after a fairly dominant performance here against a high profile opponent? I mean, the problem for Davis, first and foremost, is that he's already fought Vadim Nemkov, the defending 205 pound champion for Bellator, and lost two very close decisions, including one by split decision. That means he's not going to get a trilogy anytime soon, but maybe. For Davis, the potential good news is this. The tournament will continue the light heavyweight World Grand Prix in which Navis, uh, Nemkov knocked Davis out in April. It'll continue in October, and who knows if Nemkov comes out of that tournament with the title. And what this win meant for either Romero or Davis, turns out Davis got it, was you have to like them for being the number one contender after this tournament comes to a close. Would it, would, would it be easy for Davis to get a, a third shot against Nemkov? No, but he's going to be in a big spot to get a big fight. And at 36, he still showed you he's in incredible shape. He can still push a big pace when he needs to. The wrestling's there, a complete well-rounded game. He not only maintained distance well and made Romero sort of fight his fight, 
but he mitigated that danger so perfectly, was was the quicker fighter throughout. Davis still has it, still has it on an elite level. You just wonder if he's going to get to knock on that door a third time after coming up short twice against Nemkov. Uh, BC, we do not come here weekend after weekend to solve the shortcomings of combat sports, but I do have to put the question in front of you here. This is ruled a split decision. Uh, taking a look at your scorecard, how did you score this one? Uh, I scored it uh, 30 to 26. That's three rounds to zero with a 10 in round three in favor of Phil Davis. I can understand possibly uh, the potential for, for close scoring here because round one, there were barely any strikes of note landing, although many of us gave credit for Davis for pushing the fight forward. And in round two, you saw Romero land the biggest strike of the round when he sort of wobbled Davis with a leg kick. But I thought Davis did enough to close that round by taking Romero down cleanly and working from top position. I thought that third scorecard, 29-28 in favor of Romero, was just not accurate for what we saw in this fight. Like I mentioned, like one of the judges had, you could have just as easily gone 10-8 in that third round for Davis. Uh, they call him Mr. Wonderful. You heard the crowd booing there in San Jose. They didn't love the entertainment value. This was a wonderful performance from Davis, considering the danger across from him. No question about it. He is Brian Campbell, and he always lands the last punch here on HQ. Thank you, BC. And don't forget, there's more conversation to be had. Download and subscribe the Morning Combat Podcast with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. They're sure to put the finishing touches on this bout, including all the big-time matchups coming down the pipe. Download, subscribe, enjoy the Morning Combat. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.